What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of The Narcissist Code. I'm your favorite self-aware narcissist, Mr. Lee Hammock, better known as Mental Illness across all social media platforms. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I'm a diagnosed narcissist and I use my platform on social media to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims, survivors, and the thrivers of said disorder. Today's episode is going to be entitled, When a Narcissist Knows That You Know Who They Really Are. Ooh, when, when you know who they really are behind the scenes, what happens when they know that you know? And if y'all see my new studio, I'm actually uh, in Virginia for Thanksgiving and whatnot, so I'm in the car while the fam is in there sleeping and whatnot, so I'm shooting it in the car. I'm not living in my car. No, people are like, y'all like to jump to damn assumptions. Like, Lee's shooting in the car again. He must be, he must have slept in there. <laughs> no, I'm not sleeping in the damn car, y'all. Oh, weird. <laughs> like, I was sleeping. Oh, okay. <sighs> Y'all about, y'all about to make the narcissistic robot have to reboot <laughs> early. Um, so when a narcissist knows that, you know, typically there is a a lot of narcissists. Most narcissistic people have a fear of exposure and vulnerability and things like that. Um, my sister-in-laws are like watching me film this video. <laughs> so it's kind of weird, but I'm going to still go um, they have a fear of exposure and things like that. So. They typically try to avoid <clears throat> that exposure by, you know, having a good reputation and things like that. They typically try to avoid that exposure by, you know, doing good deeds for other people, uh, being you know, posting a lot of happy pictures online and things like that, trying to make sure that their reputation precedes them and the reputation that precedes them is a good reputation. But, you know, you know, you know who they really are, you know, who, like behind their reputation might not be a good person. Might, they might be good to everybody else, but they might not be good to you. They might treat you horribly behind the scenes and things like that. So when they know that you know, they typically, like, the threat of exposure, when, when a narcissist thinks you're going to expose them, when they think you're going to expose them to the world, they typically launch a smear campaign on you. So now some of, some of them will go silent and just let you talk to yourself and things like that. That's me. I'm the one who let you go. I'm the type of narcissistic person that will go silent and just let you just post stuff about me online, just mean stuff. Because in my mind, my reputation, my reputation is so good that if you post stuff about me, people won't believe you. You know what I mean? That's how my mind used to work. I'm just like, well, it works that way now too. But definitely used to work that way. I just like, my reputation is so good. I, I'm so good to so many people. I inspire so many people. Even before the social media stuff, I was inspiring people on my own personal Facebook. Um, that people wouldn't believe you. They're like, wait, what? You know, so I'm not going to go back and forth arguing with you. I'll just let you talk to yourself. But some people will launch a smear campaign on you. When you talk, when they think you're going to expose them because you know who they really are, they'll launch a smear campaign on you. They'll start bashing you, spread, spreading rumors about you, spreading um, falsities and half-truths about you and stuff like that, trying to make sure that nobody, like, that nobody can find out who they really are or get people to, like, get people to question, at, at minimum, question your credibility. You know what I mean? Y'all say stuff like, you know, uh, but you know, Lee, you know, some, uh, I use my name in, in this personal right here. I was like, well, Lee actually a good, a good person. Like, you know, and they told us that you were kind of crazy and they said you would do something like this. So you, just, he, he, if anything, he was being honest with us. And we don't, we don't like, we don't, we don't we're going to question you instead. So they do things like that all the time, y'all. So you yourself have to empower yourself so like I said, especially you had all the information, protect yourself. I document stuff, y'all. Have proof. If you have to expose them, make sure you have proof because otherwise it's just your word against their word. You know, some people are going to believe you. Some people are going to believe them. Like y'all see on, on real life and TV all the time. It's like we only know what's going on with what they show us on TV, not what's going on behind the scenes and things like that. You know what I mean? So when a narcissist knows, you know, they typically see out, see, see out. See, nope. <sighs> They typically seek out to protect themselves, to guard, to guard themselves, to do things like that. So they, they'll make sure, like I said, they, they have good reputations in public and things like that. They'll post themselves doing good deeds. And also, if you're their husband or wife, they'll post stuff with you to make it seem like y'all are just a happy-go-lucky family, the happiest family in the world. Like y'all are family goals, y'all are relationship goals, y'all are, you know, boyfriend-girlfriend goals, you know, boyfriend-boyfriend, girlfriend-girlfriend goes, whatever, whatever you do, do, do you. This channel is all inclusive, so do you. <laughs> but that's how it goes, though. 
So they'll make sure that their re- reputation is good. So you kind of have to do the same thing. But you know, I said you don't have to publicly make your, your rep- reputation is good because I know a lot of people don't care about your public reputation on social media and stuff like that because y'all might not be on social media. But the narcissistic person does care, I promise you. So if you know, like I said, if y'all are not dating this person, right? So if this is your friend, so if re- relationships are going to be different when they know that you know because th- th- it doesn't mean that they're going to leave you. You mean sometimes they think you, if if they think you know if you know too much, sometimes they'll start switching up their personality. You mean they'll start switching up their likes and dislikes. They'll start switching up their favorite food, their favorite music, their favorite what they were, their, their style. They'll start switching it up on you because they feel like you know too much and other times like i said if they feel like you know too much um they'll leave you they'll discard you you know what I mean? or they'll do the reverse discard um well let me go back. they'll leave you and they'll discard you and they go find somebody else that could provide a clean slate to them that well, the other person doesn't know them you know this person doesn't know me so i have a clean slate over here they'll just leave you because the new person provides a clean slate and you know too much you know what i mean the threat of exposure is too high blah 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 boo, 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 you know but so, like I said, sometimes they'll um, do the reverse discard. Well, they'll make they'll start treating treating you badly. They'll treat you bad, right? They'll treat you badly, and then they'll, uh, and once they finish treating you badly, you, they'll treat you so badly that you leave them. You know what I mean? You leave them. They they used to be my uh, my we- my weapon of choice right there was the reverse re- reverse discard because I didn't have the courage to tell somebody I didn't want to be with them anymore. I just start treating them badly. Yeah, I know I know it sounds messed up, but that's how my mind worked. I was, honestly, I just like. Ah, I'm tired of being with this person. So I would just start to kind of, you know, the love bomb would stop and the devaluation stage would start, you know, because once, once the narcissist thinks you know who they really are, they'll start to, de- they, they could start to devalue you. You mean, they could start, the love bombing definitely probably will stop and they'll start to devalue you. Sometimes they will love bomb you. If they know, I say, if they know that you know and they don't want to leave or whatever, they'll love bomb They might start love bombing you to get you off that to, to get you off that point to make you to, to make you question what do you really know about this person to make you question what do you who, who they really are and things like that you know they make you question stuff like that but that's just how it goes like, I, i'm just telling you when a narcissist knows that you know they'll start treating you differently you you'll see yeah you can feel it you can i don't know like i don't know y'all i used to think this was just fake let me be hot with you i used to think it was fake like energy and stuff like energy readers and stuff like that y'all but like you can feel it Y'all know you can feel the energy. You can feel the energy shift in a relationship with a toxic person or a narcissist or whatever when you know who they really are. Because when you know who they really are, when that, that rage flashes for the first time, that that this myth, the silent treatment goes on for, for the first time, they cheated for the first time, they put their hands on, you, hands on you for the first time, whatever it is, the energy shifts in the relationship. You know what I mean? It does. It just shifts. You can, And you can feel it. You know that you can feel it. You know what I mean? So it's cra- it can, it sometimes it gets kind of crazy y'all dealing with that deal, dealing with that type of person. But anyway, y'all, let me cut this thing short. Y'all see it's, it's freezing. I got a jacket on in the car. Well, I, well, Lee, you got you got a blanket. Is that a blanket right there, Lee? It like a blanket. They're like a blanket. You lied to us. You are living in the car. No, that is actually a Carhartt uh, wool sweater for me to wear later on. But anyway, y'all, thank y'all for tuning into another episode. Um, hopefully, I'll be back in the studio tomorrow. But we'll see. We'll see. Like and subscribe for more. And as always, mental illness is out. Peace.